Deakin's words conjure up the unique beauty of wetland habitat. This film, commissioned by the Lancashire Environmental Fund, introduces you to Brockholes, a unique wetland habitat near Preston in Lancashire. The disused quarry was already a haven for wetland birds, drawn to the open water. The water margins and grassland areas, redshank, lapwing, common sandpiper, oyster catcher, plovers, sand martins, grey wagtail, reed and sedge warbler, reed bunting, little and great crested grebes, kingfisher, swans, song thrush have all been spotted here and it also provides a vital resting stop for the passage of birds such as wimbrel. To complement the diverse bird life, Brockholes is rich in grassland, marsh and wildflower meadow and one of the first tasks was to conduct surveys and ecological studies to record the flora and fauna already here. The creation of a new reserve doesn't come without major upheaval, particularly here with the construction of a dramatically different architect designed visitor centre. The Wildlife Trust were adamant about keeping disruption to wildlife to a minimum and to repay the thoughtfulness the wildlife stayed for the duration of the build, almost keeping an eye on things. Much of the initial conservation work on the reserve improved habitat including the lowering of the southern lake to encourage more waders and roosting birds. The Southern Lake also hosts the visitor centre, so work had to be carried out to lower the water level and dam the lake in order to allow construction of the visitor centre to take place. Throughout the development, people have been at the forefront and volunteers have provided much of the conservation work, tree planting, scrub clearing and recording the site's ecology. The Lancashire Wildlife Trust saw the great potential for this site, its position close to the city of Preston, flanked by the busy M6 motorway, semi-natural ancient woodland and one of the county's major waterways, the River Ribble. The main part of the reserve is 106 hectares of wetland, a mosaic of lakes and pools, reed bed and grassy meadow, sandwiched between the linear movement of river and road, one natural, one man-made one curving, one straight. All great projects start with a plan. Reserve manager Sophie Ledson shares her thoughts on the improvement of habitat for wildlife. I need to put a pipe under there need to join that system with the low level system. And what else are we looking at? Well, we need edge, baby lapwing, baby red shank. They all need edge to feed on muddy edges. So we need those channels coming out. Lots and lots of edge in the channels, sinuous channels. We need some pools, we need to get the pools in. Plans on paper soon transformed into serious earth moving to allow seasonal management of water levels for the diversity of bird life to create wet meadow and to form outfall to the River Ribble.
Early conservation work involved groups of volunteers maintaining and improving the existing habitat. Mother Nature slowed the work in winter and created different challenges for all the reserve's inhabitants. The return of spring sees renewed activity on site. <laughs> Reedlings propagated by the Wildlife Trust are transported outside to nursery pools. and the removal of willow scrub prepares the ground for the planting out of reeds later in the year. Back at the southern lake, construction begins on the floating pontoon on which the visitor village will sit. Fifty thousand tons of earth were removed to create the dry dock for the construction of the visitor centre pontoon. The pontoon construction consists of a reinforced concrete box filled with polystyrene blocks, allowing the pontoon to float. This overcame the problem of building on a floodplain. Over 400 concrete mixer trucks delivered 4,800 tonnes of concrete to form the pontoon. On a smaller scale, construction of a boardwalk over the wet meadow added to the reserve's changing infrastructure. High summer and the wild parts of the reserve continue to flourish. <laughs> 